Okay, so here's what we're going to do is uh, you're going to draw the pair and uh, it's a very simple drawing to start. Nothing complicated. A pear is, you know, obviously pear-shaped. It's narrow at the top. It's sort of an oval, and uh, but it's kind of elongated and a bit pointy. And uh, I'm working with my pencil. I'm going to do a very large pear. You don't need to draw fast. Draw slowly. And whatever you do, don't draw like this because you'll get too much... Uh, too much graphite on your, in your painting. And what we really want is something quite simple in terms of a drawing. Now what I have to do is figure out the first color I'm going to paint. And in this case, I'm going to look at the pair. And what I see is a very um, light and kind of warm yellow. So I'm gonna start with yellow. So I'll get my yellow paint and uh, out of my palette here and mix it up and I'll make this uh, color. And, but the thing is, uh, this color that I've put out is straight cadmium yellow light and uh, it's a very good primary yellow, but it's not the color of the pear. And I've tested it on my paper. So always test your paint to see what kind of color you've got. And, um, and also what tone you have as well, like how dark is the paint. And um, so this is the color I want, and, but it's a good start because it's a primary yellow. So, you know, I'm going to add a little bit of orange to that because I see that there's something warm in that yellow. It's not a greenish yellow, so I don't want to add blue to it, which is the other side of the uh, color wheel. It has like a, a warmer color to it. So I put a little bit of orange in and that, that changes it already into kind of a more of a, you know, of a, just a more of an egg yolky sort of orange. And here's even a little bit more. And, uh, and I've got an even stronger sort of orangey yellow. And the trouble is this is too dark. So I need to put a little water in it. So I'm gonna very carefully just dip my brush lightly in the water and bring some water to the mixture and then stir it up. And I'm stirring it and I'm also scraping the paint off on, into the little dish because I don't want to put a blob of paint down. I want to uh, see what I've really got on my brush. And then I do another stroke and test that. So I think I need to make it even lighter so I'm going to put a lot of water into it. And, and then I'm going to stir it up and again, scrape my brush on the edge of the uh, little palette. And then I do another tone. Now this one's much lighter and this looks pretty close to what I want to have. The trouble is I have to fill in this whole area with this color and I don't think I have enough here. So this is one thing that you should always do, especially at the beginning of your paintings, always mix a lot more paint than you think you need. So I'm gonna start with a bit of water here and add more water. Then I'm gonna take a bit more color of yellow. I'm gonna add a bit more yellow to this and a little bit of orange. And this is because like I remembered what I used. So sometimes when you're mixing colors, try to keep track of what you're using. Make sure that you, uh, you know, use the same colors if you can and you know, try to remember, because this is part of the whole process is that you, you have to sort of think about what colors you're using. And then if you remember what you used, it's easier to remix the color. And it's definitely possible to do this. And there's, there's this light version of the color that I think I want. So I think now I have enough here. I'm gonna saturate my brush with it. And I'm going to start painting the pair by working from the top and with my large square brush and sweeping the paint across the whole shape of the pear and working towards the bottom. This is because I, I want it to be quite smooth. I don't want to have um, a lot of blobs. I want to spread the paint really evenly. I, I, the paint will start to dry up at the top. And so I don't want to go back over the dry areas. And in this way, I can keep painting the paint and keeping it kind of 
very consistent down towards the bottom part of the object. So the next thing I need to do is go to the next color. And the next thing I see in the pair is, is kind of a sort of an, a, kind of a, an or, a darker orangey color that is more in this area, in this half of the pair than it is in this half or in this part. So I'm gonna then use the same color, but I'm gonna add a little more orange to it so that it uh, gets a bit more color in it. So I'm gonna make this stronger. And then I'm gonna see how that works, if that makes a stronger, more orangey color. It sort of does, but I think, you know, that pair has red in it. And I think I can maybe add a little bit of alizarin crimson to that. And that will maybe get me more close to the color that I want, which is something a little bit more of a, of a sort of a reddish orange color. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of water to this, not very much, but just a bit, just to make it a little bit lighter. And then I start to put in this color. The paint is still wet on the pear, which is good. And once again, I'm, I'm painting from one end to the other, but this time, I'm going to leave part of the pear unpainted and I'm just going to try and put the, the new color on everywhere else, including anywhere where there's eventually going to be some red. I, I can turn my brush sideways and make some light, uh, smaller marks too. So this is the good thing about using the big brush, the big square brush is that you can um, change the shape and size of the brush stroke. So if I want to kind of make this look a little, little less kind of hard edged, because uh, the, the brush stroke is, is quite, you know, squarish, I can kind of break it up a bit. The other thing I can do here is, um, I'll just fill this in a bit. The other thing I can do is if the edge is a bit too strong, I'm just going to wash my brush in water a little bit. And then I'm going to uh, dry it with my paper towel, and then I, I can kind of soften that up a little. Not by over painting it. Don't be too, don't be too tough on the paint, just uh, stroke it a little, and then that kind of softens up that, those edges, you know, those, that kind of area around the edge of the, of the light area. Okay, so now I'm going to go to another stage, and I'm going to start adding a stronger color. I'm going to put red into this color that I was using. And now I'm making it like really like a red, a reddish orange. So this is like a, what we call a tertiary color. And then still using this big brush, I'm going to start putting that in and, and I'm going to do it a little bit less evenly <laughs> because I see sort of these kind of uh, streaks and and a kind of unevenness to the red that's in the pear. And so I'm gonna just put it on in a kind of splotchy sort of way. So look at your fruit or vegetable and see if you see brush strokes in it. You know, you probably notice that, oh gee, there's some things that look like they could be made with a brush stroke. And if there are, try to imitate it with your, with your brush if you can. So now the pear is getting um, a little bit redder. And I'll put some more up here and so on. Okay, now it's really quite wet, uh, this pear. I like guess the paint is, is, you know, there's a lot of water on there. I'm actually gonna dry my brush because there's a bit too much I'm going to use my brush to sort of lift that extra paint off that's at the edges. I'm tilting the paper so that the paint kind of runs down a bit there, and that sort of removes it. And now, you know, the best thing for me to do right now is wait for this to dry, and then I'll go back into it with more of the red color that I need to develop, just some more texture and lines in here. Now, and while I'm waiting though, it's pretty dry at the edges here. So I'm gonna do the shadow now. And a shadow, um, I, how do you put your object on white paper? Because you'll get a nice sort of blue or, or gray blue or purpley blue kind of shadow happening. And uh, so I'm gonna get some of my blue 
cobalt blue and mix that up. And I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of orange into that because uh, orange is the complement of cobalt blue. And uh, we talked about this a little bit last week, I think when I was talking about making the, uh, mixing complementary colors and how you get these sort of very interesting um, grays and browns. So I'm just mixing up this, uh, this sort of a gray blue color here. Now I'm gonna test that and see what color I get. And I get this, it's still fairly blue. So I'm gonna add a bit more orange to it. And that will make it a little bit more gray. And, and then um, I'm going to put a bit of, just a dash of purple in it. You know, this is like using salt or something when you're cooking, like you have to be really careful not to put in too much because it'll just change really quickly and then yikes. But uh, we just put in a little at a time then you, be, you can control your mixing. So don't be in a hurry. And uh, you know, think about what colors you need to add when you're mixing, but be careful about how much you put in at once. So I put a little bit of um, purple in that and it just, it just makes the blue a little warmer, a little bit more, um, I don't know, just a little nicer. And also purple is the complement of yellow. And I've got, this has now got a little purplish sort of side to it. So I think that will complement the yellowness in the pear. And then to paint the shadow, I think ideally don't draw the shadows outline. Just try to paint it by starting on one side. And, you know, again, like you're painting the, uh, when I started painting the pear, just draw the shadow across sort of evenly, you know, sweep the paint across so that you, you kind of make the, <clears throat> the shadow shape. And uh, there. Now, you know, um, I'm looking at the pear and it's, it's, it's dry and it's taking its time. This is probably where a blow dryer will become, come in handy, which I don't have. I don't blow dry my hair. But you know, if you have a blow dryer and, you, and it's around, you can use it to uh, make things um, dry a little more quickly. And uh, this might be sort of helpful and this, this would be helpful to me because I'm gonna just keep working on this, but I'm still gonna have a lot of, a lot of flowing and blending. But what I need is a little bit of some kind of beigey color, which I made here, because there are sort of some brownish areas in the um, in the pear that I want to try and get. So I'm actually going to put a little purple into this yellow, and it will make it go a bit more like a yellow ochre, which is sort of what I'm trying to get. And uh, a little bit more here, and then there's just just a little bit of that going on here. I'm still using my big brush. I, I really like big brushes because uh, I can make a big mark or I can make a small mark. And uh, yeah, that's, that works really well for me. However, at this point, I could also use a brush like this, like the smaller square and, and use that because it'll make um, smaller marks and it's a little, you know, a little less obtrusive and so on. I can make great. Marks up here, and so on. So, put a few things up there, and there's a few little marks here. And uh, I'm just kind of adding these little textural marks. They're quite light, so you know, I don't have to get too dark or anything like that. And uh, there might be a few over in here too. I think there's, these probably won't show up because this is already fairly dark anyway. Okay, but the other thing I can do is let's put this color into the stem so we get that going. All right, now stronger color because I'm now going to go for, for some, uh, some more red. Again, be very careful. Alizarin crimson is a very strong color and uh, you want to be careful not to add too much at once. So I just added a little bit. I haven't added any more water. And now I'm gonna sort of try and get some of these, these strokes in here. 
And you can see the paint is still quite wet. So you'll probably be working fairly wet on wet yourselves. To, and uh, you know, don't be afraid because it does it does do some lovely things that you you probably don't expect. And uh, so yeah, I'm still using this big brush. <laughs> However, at this point, um, if you wanted to use a smaller brush, like something like this size, then that would be okay as well. Because I'm mostly using the brush on its side anyway. And this one will put in more textural marks and things. Okay, a little bit more up here, some dots up here. And then if you like, put in something you don't like, or you, or you think, oh, that doesn't work very well. And here, I've also splashed my paper, which I'm going to dab here. But if you, if you also don't like something, you can wet your brush and you can move it around or lift it off even. You know, so, you know, also don't be afraid to try doing things like that today. Like try to, uh, um, you know, sort of, be aware that you can lift off your paint if you have to, and, and uh, if that helps, then just wet your brush, dry it, and then it will soak up the paint and lift it off, and then you sort of blot it in your paper towel, and uh, that will remove things. The other thing is, um, I need a highlight, and um, I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna use this little square brush that I have, and I'm going to wet it and I'm going to dry it. And then I'm going to try and put a highlight in here because I see this sort of light area. And what I'm doing is lifting the paint with the brush and then blotting the brush. So I'm actually taking the paint off the brush and then putting the brush in there to pull out that area and make it a bit lighter. It'll never go perfectly white, but it will it will make it lighter. And sometimes this can be helpful. Finally, I guess I should pay attention to this stem up here. And uh, I'm going to make a sort of a nice brown color by mixing purple. <laughs> in other words, dioxazine violet, which is, in my opinion, like really intense purple. And I'm going to put this with a little bit of orange. And the orange makes the purple go brown. And the reason that this is good is because uh, orange has a bit of red in it, but it also has yellow. And yellow is the complement of purple. So it's going to make the purple go earthy or, or go brownish. And, and yet, but there's a little bit of red in the orange that gives it a kind of a nice um, warm sort of color. So you get this sort of medium brown. This is quite dark too, see, it's like a, a nice sort of rich, orangey, dark brown. And I've hardly put any color into it. And then I'm going to paint that stem in. So. And, and for these, obviously for small areas, a little brush is the best thing to use because that's going to, you know, get your details in and so on. So. And then, um, so, you know, ideally I would let this dry even more and then I will put in more of the stripes and little marks that I see in the pair. And, and also you can begin to sort of try things with your, with your brush, making textures, little strokes, little dabs and things. Um, you know, try to imitate what you see and the other thing too is, you know, um, it's good to have a test paper beside you because you can also test things out on the test paper. Like if you wanna see what kinds of marks that you can make with your brush or if you wanna try things or anything, you can do it somewhere else. And then if it looks good, you can bring it to your painting. And if it doesn't look good, then you go, well, I just won't use that. Try something else until you, until you get what you, what you really want to have happening. And uh, so and gradually you can build up your, your painting. So, ooh. 
Try to avoid using any outlining or anything like that. Just look closely at your fruit and vegetable and you'll probably see that everything is about different tones and values and different colors. And, um, and uh, you won't need an outline at all.